We want to welcome in uh, a guest uh, to our show this morning. It's Wendy Miller from Sharon Audubon. Wendy, good morning. Good morning, Marshall. Thanks for joining us this morning, and uh, thanks for rescheduling. (laughs) No problem. You're welcome. All right. So you have actually a a doubleheader of sorts, which is coming up. Uh, And uh, I guess it's a doubleheader uh, that's involving Butterflies, the Audubon Center, and and Doug Tallamy. We do. We're excited about it. For those who don't know, we, uh, Audubon Sharon, received a grant back in the winter to build a new butterfly house and caterpillar rearing lab on the grounds at Sharon Audubon Center. And uh, with that, we're kind of doing our big uh, butterfly celebration festival as kind of a a grand opening to our butterfly project, even though it's kind of the end of the butterfly season at this point, but uh, gives the public a little sneak peek as into what the project is and what is going to be available to the public starting next spring and summer. So we're excited about that. Now, this all starts off on Friday uh, uh, the 13th in, in Litchfield, right at 7 o'clock with Douglas uh, Tallamy? Yeah, so we're kicking it off um, with a special, special presentation by Dr. Dr. Douglas Tallamy. He's a professor in the Department of Entomology and Wildlife Ecology at the University of Delaware, and he's the author of the book Bringing Nature Home, How You Can Sustain Wildlife with Native Plants. Um, he's an excellent speaker, and he's going to be talking about how we can help bird populations, which, of course, is important to Audubon, um, by, by helping to um, bring back native caterpillar populations, because Approximately 96% of songbirds feed their young um, insects and spiders, but mostly caterpillars. And the ornamental plants that we are putting into our landscapes today around our homes are not supporting the native caterpillars that the birds need in order to feed their young. So if we don't have the caterpillars around, uh, we don't have the birds, and which, of course, we all know is important for for humans as well. We need the birds, we need the biological diversity, so we need the, the insects. So he'll be speaking at that about that at the Litchfield Community Center, and that's in Litchfield, on Friday evening at 7 o'clock. And what's interesting about that is, you know, we always talk about, you know, when you live within nature, you learn to cooperate with nature, uh, how people now, uh, instead of using uh, pesticides and other things, uh, they put bat houses around their house to get rid of uh, uh, any nat- the natural way of getting rid of basically a lot of insects around your house and 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 the bats are actually a, a friend to mankind that way and and I guess by creating a habitat that's that's great for butterflies is the same way you're just building upon the future absolutely it's you know bats are super important the butterflies and other insects and pollinators so uh, we're really trying to stress the importance of planting natives um, native plants native wildflowers native trees. Um, rather than a lot of the ornamentals that people are putting around their houses. It looks nice, but it's not. If you look at those specific trees or plants that are the exotic, the ornamentals, you're not going to find a lot of insects using those because they're just not a, a food plant or a host plant for those insects. And we've actually seen that, interesting enough, last summer in our rehab clinic. We've had baby birds that were coming in with um, they're malnourished, they had feather growth problems, they had stress bars on their feathers, which all kind of shows that they're not getting the diet that they should be getting in the wild. So that lack of caterpillars and the lack of insects is showing up in the birds that are around us. So once again, Wendy Miller is with us from Sharon Audubon, uh, Part 1, uh, on Friday, September 13th, 7 to 8.30 in Litchfield, Connecticut. Uh, Dr. Douglas Talamay, a guide to restoring the little things that run the world. Now, Part two of your weekend is uh, the Butterfly Celebration Festival, but wrapped in with that festival, which is Saturday, September 14th, we remind people for the past couple of weeks, we've been speaking about uh, the wild and beautiful creatures, the life and work of J.J. Audubon, uh, which is really an effort between uh, the Hotchkiss School, uh, Sharon Audubon. I mean, a lot has gone into that. So let's talk about... uh, Part two of this, which is the Butterfly Celebration Festival on Saturday, September 14th from 10 to 3 at Sharon Audubon. Right. So this is kind of just a sneak peek for the public into this whole new butterfly project that we're doing at Audubon Sharon. So uh, even though it's still a work in progress and it's going to be throughout, you know, the next coming years, we do have butterflies in the flight house now. Um, Currently, we have hundreds of monarch caterpillars and chrysalises. 
Um, and so people will be able to come and take a tour. They'll be able to go into the Butterfly Flight House and have the monarchs flying around them. Um, we'll be able to show them the caterpillar rearing lab, and they'll be able to see those chrysalises and the caterpillars. And we'll talk about how we're collecting the eggs and raising the caterpillars and the butterflies, and then eventually we will be releasing them. So we'll release these monarchs um, for migration and um, just so they can be out in the wild again. So we're helping the monarch population as well. Um, and it's just we're going to have experts there speaking about um, just basic butterfly facts, um, basic butterfly, common butterfly identification, um, what they can do to plant natives, like how to plant natives at your own home to attract these butterflies, um, and not just monarchs, but, you know, all the common butterflies, the native butterflies that we see around this area. And there's going to be activities for kids and uh, crafts, and we're going to have face painting and butterfly merchandise available for purchase. We're going to do a small native plant sale. Um, so if people are saying, hey, you know, what can I do to plant to attract these butterflies? We'll have some plants right there for you to take home. I think it's interesting looking at the schedule of events for the Butterfly Celebration Festival on, on uh, Saturday um, is uh, you start off with yoga by the pond at 10 o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just a little, uh, a little serene yoga up by the pond because um, it starts at 10 o'clock. We're going to do mostly um, in that kind of 45 minutes, an hour, um, going around and looking for um, butterflies and other pollinators in the field and just doing some basic catching and a, a bio blitz, just seeing what's out there and, and getting people to notice what is actually out there using these flowers. Um, but, you know, yoga is, is nice, too. A lot of people start off their morning, and it'll be up by the pond, which is up by the butterfly garden, so we can be overlooking the butterfly garden at the same time. So it's, it just kicks off with a little bit of yoga by the pond while we're searching for insects as well. And then at 1045, yeah. we have the ribbon-cutting ceremony to open up the, the flight house itself. And then from 11 to about 245, we have the ongoing activities and the presentations that take place. Um, and then at the end, at 2.45, if weather's cooperating, we'll do some butterfly releases. So we'll be tagging the butterflies and releasing some of them. So when they start their migration south, um, if they are indeed found um, when they travel south, they'll be able to track those butterflies back up to Sharon Audubon. And what you were saying also, uh, which I think is, is, is great the way you've wound it in here, is that uh, the plants that will be on sale will be the plants exactly that this whole weekend – is basically telling you to, to help the small things. In, Absolutely, in your yeah. The you know the these butterflies and pollinators they need their nectar plants, so they have a source of food, obviously, and they have host plants. So some of these butterflies have plants that they use specifically for food, and then they have plants where they what they use specifically for laying their eggs. So um, we have a little bit of both um, that people can can purchase there and take home and start their gardens. It's not too late to plant them now, and then they'll come up again in the spring. And we remind people that uh, the great thing about almost everything that you do at the uh, Sharon Audubon Center, uh, you welcome uh, people of all ages. doesn't matter if you've got young kids. They'll be just as thrilled as what goes on at Sharon Audubon on this day, as well as if you have a 90-year-old uh, grandparent. Uh, really, I think what the Audubon has to offer uh, re reaches out over all the different demographics. Absolutely, especially uh, especially the Butterfly Celebration Festival. We try to have a little bit of something for everybody. So um, you can learn about the butterfly life cycle. Uh, if you're an adult, we can just you know go over that with you. But we also have a, an activity for kids that they can actually act it out. So we try to have something for everybody. I would say Dr. Talamy's presentation on Friday evening is more for the adult yeah. crowd um, than for kids. But the festival itself is, is definitely for all ages. And who doesn't love um, have butterflies? fluttering around you. So when you go into the Butterfly Flight House, that will definitely be happening. And it's just something that, uh, I mean, even when we go out there, the staff, and I'm out there quite often now, it's just so amazing to walk in there and have these butterflies flying around you. Um, so I think everybody would be able to enjoy it if they came. Butterfly Celebration Festival is Saturday, September 14th from 10 to 3 at Sharon Audubon. Uh, there is a $10 uh, donation for adults, $5 for kids 12 and under. What I think what I should point out before we go back to Friday is that I'm not sure how many people realize that. Like a lot of people think we're an NPR station, that we get money from NPR. 
We don't. <laughs> our budget, we pay. Uh, we pay, and our budget is our own is our own responsibility. And I remember years and years and years and years ago, uh, National Audubon, uh, the way Sharon Audubon survives, you survive on your own budget. That's right. Yeah, a lot of people think that we have. Uh, that we're completely taken care of by National Audubon Society. And, but um, as far as Sharon Audubon Center goes, we're owned and operated by National Audubon Society, but we do rely mostly on our own um, local donations and memberships, um, our, our school programs that we teach, the tuition coming in from that. So we do rely on the support from the community and events like this. Well, that's what, that's what makes it so important. And I know that you're not surprised, and we're not surprised because we get the same problem here where people People think, oh, because you were NPR, that we're funded and we you don't have assumed, to. You have so, to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, yes, Sharon yes. Audubon and everything that you do, really is. It's we. we I always used to call it, and still call it, Sharon's uh, amazing hidden jewel, <laughs> because uh, you you do uh, keep the doors open uh, on the good graces, really, of people supporting these events that you do and, and raising funds locally. We do. We rely on the support of, like I said, the community and beyond these donations. Our volunteers. We have a bunch of volunteers who help out with animal care and um, office, uh, just office duties. And now we have the whole Butterfly Project where we've had uh, wonderful volunteers the last several weeks or even the last couple months just collecting hundreds of, cat- um, sorry, excuse me, butterfly eggs and rearing the caterpillars. And it's, it's a lot of work, and we rely on them um, and the support that we get from the community and also from grants. I mean, this whole thing wouldn't happen if we wouldn't have the uh, grants that we received from uh, an anonymous grant and one from the Northwest Connecticut Community Foundation. So we're very thankful for, for those grants. So the weekend we are talking about is uh, Friday, September 13th, 7 o'clock in Litchfield, Connecticut, Dr. Douglas Talamai presentation, A Guide to Restoring Little Things That Run the World. And then, of course, on Saturday uh, is uh, the Butterfly Festival at Sharon Audubon. Uh, Sharon.audubon.org. Is there a telephone number people can... Call sure. For so for information, they can either contact our website, which is sharon.audubon.org, or they can call uh, 860-364-0520. And for the uh, talk on Friday night, pre-registration is appreciated but not required, and you can call that number um, and just tell us how many people are coming. And it is $10 per person for Friday evenings talk, but if you attend that presentation, you will get 50% off one adult admission ticket for the Butterfly Celebration Festival on Saturday. Um, busy weekend that weekend at the Sharon Audubon. Wendy, thanks for taking a few minutes and joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Uh, that's Sharon Audubon, Sharon.audubon.org, Sharon.audubon.org uh, for more information.